Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to use Flipgrid. To get started, visit Flipgrid.com and if you are new to Flipgrid, click on the Educator Sign Up button, uh, log in with your Google or your Microsoft account to create your account. Flipgrid is fully free for all teachers. If you already have an account, click on the Educator Login link. From here, it will take you to your discussion board. The discussion page has all of your groups and topics. Typically, you would create one group for your classroom if you're an elementary teacher. If you're a secondary teacher, you may want to create separate groups for each of your class periods or class sections. Um, you could also just create a topic. A topic is like an assignment. When you create a topic, you create a prompt like a video or a picture, and students are able to respond to that. You don't have to create groups. It just makes things a little bit simpler and easier in the long run. But you have to create a topic in order for students to respond. To get started, I'm going to create a group. From this page, click on Create a Group button. From here, you have to give the group a name. The join code is going to create an address for your group. So here, you'll see that the join code has to be unique across Flipgrid, so it does create its own little address. It makes it very easy. So you want to find something that's memorable and short. You have a couple of different options for how to add students to your group. You can individually add students' email addresses. That's kind of time consuming. Instead, do it by the school district's domain. Everything in your email address after the at sign, and then that way you limit your group to people within your school district. You can also assign usernames for each student. This is useful if you're dealing with younger students, people who don't quite have an email address yet. Uh, for now, I'm going to use the email option and click Next. Now from here, like I said, I'm just going to put a domain name in here. You could individually list each student in here, but that would be a lot more work than just putting in the domain name. You also have the option for a guest password. A guest password is something you use if you want people outside of your school district to access your Flipgrid. For example, if you want parents involved or some sort of community Flipgrid. In this case, I'm going to turn that off because I want to limit it to just students. Then click Next. You can optionally import topics from other grids. If you're a Google Classroom user, this is kind of like importing assignments or reusing a post. For now, I'm just going to skip that because I want to create an empty grid. Now from here, I have the option to share my grid. I can copy this by clicking this link. You also have other popular options. You can share it to a Google Classroom, um, share it to Microsoft Teams if that's what you do. You can also copy it to QR code if you want to have something that people can scan with the Flipgrid app or with their Chromebooks. For now, I'm just going to go to the group. I don't want to share it now because they have nothing to share, right? So if you create a group, that's great. But before people can respond, you have to have a topic. So right now, I'm just going to create an empty group by clicking Go to Group. So here with my empty group, if I scroll down, I have zero topics in there, which means I have no assignments. I have no prompts that I've submitted to students. From here, I click Add a Topic. A topic is like an assignment. You need a topic in order for students to respond to your uh, assignment. So here, I'm going to give it a title. And then under the prompt, you can give some text instructions. Then a little farther down, you have the media sec. Media is where things get interesting with Flipgrid. Typically, people will record a video. So if you click record a video, this will give you a screen and it will activate your camera. So if it's a laptop, it'll be a web camera. If you have a document camera, that works as well. So from here, you can give instructions. You can use your document camera as an art teacher to draw a picture or demonstrate how to use some sort of a skill. If you're a math teacher, you can solve an equation and give them sort of a sample for that. To do that, click on the record button and you'll get a countdown. This countdown is for three seconds and then now you're live, so now you're recording. You can um, give your instructions here. You can pause it and stop it there and then um, you have some options from here. The flip option allows you to change cameras. So like I said, you could have different cameras on your computer. You can flip between your web camera and your docking camera like that. Under options, there are some fun things there. You can record your screen. So if you want to demonstrate a skill on your computer or if you're on a Chromebook, you can do that as well and show students how to do something on their computer. Um, you can also use some fun effects. So with this, you can use some filters, kind of give it kind of a different hue or a different glow to it, uh, make yourself look a little weird. And then you can also do some fun things like draw on it, add some emojis. Um, and these are just kind of ways to add more interesting, uh, kind of more interesting flair to it. Once you're happy with that, click on Next. Now we're on the edit screen. So a lot of times when you're recording something, the first few seconds you don't want to include, the end of it you don't want to include. If I mouse over this segment, I can click on it. From here, you'll see there's little handlebars at the end. So you can move this a little farther along. After you've done your trim, go ahead and click on Confirm. So after you've created your lesson there, click Next. 
Now from here you have the option to add a cover photo. For this, a lot of times it'll take a snapshot of something during your video and maybe it's not the most flattering. So you can select a frame. So click that and it gives you the timeline of your video and you can try to find something that you want to be the cover of your video or you could also take a selfie. So click this, reopen your camera from here, give a good smile. And then now that's gonna be the um, cover photo for your video. Once you like that, click confirm and it'll upload your video. So here you're, you're wrapping up the media prompt that goes with your topic. Click on complete. And now uh, this is part of your, uh, your lesson now. You can only have one piece of media with your lesson, with your topic um, at a time. So if you wanted to do a video, you can't do a video and a picture or a video and an emoji. You have to pick one or the other. Uh, scroll down a little bit, you have permissions. So your group has certain permissions that are set up with it. By default, go and click continue. You can allow extra people to be part of your lesson if you wanted them to. Generally, you want, you want to just kind of keep that locked down so it's just your students that have access to it. You don't want people from the outside getting into it. Um, farther down, you have some more features such as topic moderation. If you have students that are not as mature as you want them to be, you could use topic moderation to allow you to review any submissions before they go live to everybody else. Recording time is something you want to take a look at. The more time you give them, the more opportunity they have to ramble on. You can change it to something like 30 seconds. That way they have to be a little more um, purposeful with their words. Um, comments, you can enable or disable comments. This is kind of a good way to, for kids to socialize with each other. Um, you can let them respond to each other, give feedback to each other. Um, or if you need to, you can disable it if you feel it's an issue. Uh, once you have that created, go ahead and click Create Topic. So now we have our prompt and it's ready to share with students. You can copy this to email it to them. If you're using Google Classroom, you can directly post it to Google Classroom. You can embed it within your, uh, a different HTML page or if you're a Microsoft Teams user and post to some other platforms. Uh, once you're happy with that, click on All Set. So now you have a Flipgrid assignment that is ready to be shared with students. Now we're going to look at the topic from the student's perspective. It's good to see what the student sees so you're able to support them and better help them. From here, I copy the address for my topic and I'm visiting that as a student. I click on Join with Google and I'm going to select my student email account. Remember, this is locked down so only people who are logged in with your school district domain are able to access your grid. So here I am on the topic. I can see the title, I see the instructions, I can see the video prompt that I created. When I click the play button, I'm able to view the video uh, so I can see what your instructions are or see your example of how to solve a problem. So from here, I click the record a response button and now this opens up my camera. I have to give them permissions to use my camera. And now as the student, they're able to uh, record a response. From here, it looks very similar to what the teachers see. They click on record, they get a countdown. Then they're able to give some sort of response. So they can answer your question. They can hold up a picture that they drew, that sort of a thing. Once they're done with it, they click pause to stop the recording. Click next. Again, they're able to edit the video themselves. Uh, they can add more to the video. So if they want to do it in multiple parts, they can do that by clicking add more, then click next. Here they can put in their display name. Uh, they can link to an optional reference if they want to, an optional resource. Take a selfie, select a frame just like you could for your uh, cover photo, then click submit. This will upload it to your topic as a response. If you have moderation on, you get to preview this before other students see it. So now this has been uploaded to this topic as a response. So now if I go back to the teacher screen and hit refresh, I will see that the student's response has been added to my topic and I can see it here in my list of responses. So as students begin to respond uh, from your classroom, they'll all become added to this list. If a student posts something and you feel it's inappropriate, you can hide it from everybody else. So from here, you can click on the student's response and you can preview what they responded. If you scroll down, you can add a public comment. This is something that all the other students will see. If you click on feedback, you can leave a private comment. That's just between you and the student. That's just a way for you to kind of communicate with them. You can also record feedback. From here, you can open up your camera and just kind of have a conversation back and forth with the students through Flipgrid using video, which is really a great way just to try and engage them that isn't just text. So that is the overview of how to use Flipgrid. Thanks for watching. If you have a question, leave a comment below. Let me know if I can help.